In my experience, the timber trade, not just the illegal timber trade, but the timber trade, is one of the most corrupt industries on this planet. Delving into their business and, and supplies of timber and so on can be a tricky uh, proposition. It is an organized crime, just like any other organized crime, and typically those are the most dangerous types of, of criminals. We're in a national park in Borneo. We are monitoring the illegal logging operations of a timber barrel there. What we saw was no enforcement, no markings, no nothing. There was clearly a massive illegal logging operation going on. We witnessed and filmed log rafts that clearly come from the park. And we got a tip off and we were alerted to a ship that was leaving Borneo. The log export ban was being broken. The logs were coming from a park, so it's illegal to, to log in a national park. They were being placed on a ship and sent to Vietnam. We were able to follow some of these logs to a very large sawmill that was placed on the side of the major river near the town. When we got there, we asked to see the timber baron, and that was my mistake. We got caught. We were actually physically kidnapped. And all the doors were locked, so we couldn't have got out. And we were driven to the middle of town. We were taken up the stairs and into their office. And he took something from the top of the television and he slammed it down on the table in front of us and it was a gun. And that was the point when I really thought, OK, it's over. We were beaten, we were hurt, um, and we were threatened with our lives with a, with a gun and a pistol. Just keep that thing running. We've been held hostage, basically, for three days. Outside here, there is a mob of um, thugs. And as I'm speaking to you, there are two men at the window uh, looking in as well, who are also part of the mob. And across the street, the police are arming themselves with rifles and preparing, I hope, to take Rui and I to the airport so that we can get out of here. After a lot of intervention, we did make a very quick getaway. There was a plane waiting for us, and we managed to get out. The Environmental Investigation Agency, EIA, specializes in investigating eco-crimes all around the world. Timber trade investigators Julian and Faith are preparing a new undercover investigation into illegal logging in Southeast Asia. I've been working at EIA for over 10 years now. I've been investigating the illegal timber trade for that time as well, and we have to carry on trying to expose that and to get it stopped. Criminal gangs are always changing their methods, their routes, and how the timber's moved around. So we need to keep on top of these individuals and these gangs that are doing this illegal logging. That means trying to get close to the business and understand how it's being done and who's doing it. After years of successfully exposing illegal logging in Indonesia, EIA's attention is now turning to Vietnam. There are concerns that some well-connected companies may be exploiting legal loopholes to get around these log export bans. EIA suspect high-level corruption. The last few years, Indonesia seems to have been policing its log export ban a lot better. Yeah, it's working well there. Yep. But from what we know, Vietnam's furniture industry is still heavily dependent on imports of, of wood, including logs. Vietnam has a thriving furniture business, export business. It needs raw materials. It needs those logs. And if you look at where Vietnam is, it's sure a lot easier to get the stuff from neighboring countries. So the question is, where, where is it coming from? Absolutely. There's log export bans, in fact, throughout Southeast Asia. Uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos have export bans. So with all the countries in the region having these controls in place, the big question in my mind is, are these laws effective? Or is Vietnam still getting wood from these countries?